This will be an exercise in how to start an oil painting from a charcoal sketch. As you will learn, there are lots of different ways to start an oil painting. This method is popular with many modern day artists, including myself, and is in fact a variation of an imprimatura technique from the early Renaissance. As you work your way through this course of essential techniques, we will be exploring together lots of other ways of starting an oil painting. This will give you a strong foundation in the many different ways of painting. Let's so we've made four equal parts and I'm going to go and do that again to make eight equal parts. Hopefully they're not too dissimilar. If they are, then blame it on the age. Right, let's come down here. Again, we're going to go halfway. Halfway again. Halfway and again halfway. So we can start putting in a little line across here now just to represent that. And kind of want it to come down, go across. This is a rough guide. Nothing more. It comes up. Let me bring that down slightly. These early stages, we don't want to get too lost in detail. Keep it, um, keep it very simple. No need to get complicated at this stage. So I'm going to put this in a cross as a darker value. And although we won't go to a black with this um, stain, going dark is fine. I just want to, as soon as we have a bit of variation, I'm using two brushes now. This is a, you could say a slightly lifty off brush, and this is a brush to put the stain on. And just here, it's very easy to put this tree dead center and dead center, as we know, is just here. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to move that tree. So it's around about here There's the base of it. And we can stick that in. I want it to come across like that. So it's kind of center, but not. Put that in as a rough. And I think this is one of the big key features and uh, benefits of oil painting is that it's not finished until you say it is. And you can't really, you can't really do it damage because if you get it something wrong or it doesn't look right, well, you just wipe it off. You can't do that with um, other mediums. Acrylic dries very quickly, which a lot of people like. And watercolour, it's quite unforgiving. If you get something in the wrong place, it's really difficult sometimes to lift it off. This is a soft brush. It's a 305 from Rosemary & Co. And it's number 8, I think. So worn out, I can't actually tell. I think it's a number 8. Rosemary brushes, in my honest opinion, are Probably some of the best brushes you can buy for the money. They're great. I've had brushes which are here. This one, for example, must be probably six, seven years old. I just carry on. If you look after them, they look after you. Can you feel how relaxing this is? It's not like you're having to choose colours. It comes later. And this little study, it's going to be an interesting one, I think, for you to experience because my intention is to paint it a purple. Now, as I always like to remind students of the differences between a shadow and a reflection. If this was a reflection, if these were, say, this is water in front, these reflections will come straight into our eyes. So this would come straight down, this would come straight down, that would be straight down, if there's a tree here, it'd be straight down. But a shadow is different. A shadow follows a light source. So here the light source is the sun, or will be, a greater light. And so it follows the shadow, the light, I should say. The shadow follows the light. So here it's going to come down. Good, this is looking 
something a bit more interesting. Now, look, there's some trees here, which easiest way to put those in. Get um, some of the stain on this big brush. This is going to be um, the foliage area, so we've got some stuff going on here. Maybe a bit of light coming through, but on the whole, it's quite tonal. Again, letting the brush dance. If you want an area to really come off, then just use the uh, cloth. One thing I just want to say, don't use white, don't use black. If you want to make this dark, it's purple. Best thing to do is put a yellow in, but most of the yellows have got are opaque, and I don't want opaque in there either, so I'm going to persevere with this and just put it a little bit stronger. That's it. So let's start putting in some of these other trees, and we've got a nice one coming up here. I feel. Yeah, it's kind of blends itself. It's kind of, I see it as coming up like that. And hitting the base here. It's kind of a, it's not near ground, but it's not distant. So we need to make sure the tree is wide enough for it to be believable. It's amazing how realistic you can make something look when you're just putting in some dark shapes. That's why I say to students, think tree. <laughs> just think of what a tree would look like or do. Take yourself, when you're in a forest, don't just walk, look. Look at what the forest is telling you. Trees have voices, listen to them. As the wind passes through them, each tree has its own unique sound. Oak, different to redwood. I don't know how it sounds, but it sounds all over here already. Well, next time you go in a forest and a wind blows, you listen to those trees. Become aware of their shapes. These initial painting exercises, the essential techniques in painting, this is an essential technique. You do need to learn how to do this. And this um, is one way of doing it, where we put the guides in and then we darken the areas around. The other way is of a main area of an imprimatura, firstly using probably, um, well, you, you're losing different colors. You'd be using raw umber, and or burnt sienna along with French ultramarine blue to create your values because they're all transparent or semi-transparent colors but it gives you more of a sepia sepia brown let's call it brown underpainting there are things which we can put in which we can put in when it comes to actually doing the painting itself We've roughly mapped out our design. We've got the path going where we want it, some light and some dark shapes around the place. We've outlined some of the rocks. I think we're okay. So this is what I'm gonna ask you to do to get to this sort of stage. Try it once and then try it again. You don't have to do a big canvas like this. You can do something which is maybe I don't know, sort of a smallish like this, about 12 by 8 maybe, something along those lines. 12 inches by 8 inches. It doesn't have to be big. A, what's that, a, a4? Something like that sort of size. And just practice. Don't do one, don't do two, do three or four. And just hone your skills. Okay, guys, well, this is the end of the first stage, the imprimatur stage of study number four and we'll be painting it very very soon this will be dry by tomorrow morning until then have fun and i'll see you in the next lesson all the best